Joining us now is James King, who is a former San Quentin inmate and the co-director of programs for the Ella Baker Center for Human Rights. Thank you for being here after bi this big announcement from the governor, James. My pleasure. Okay, before we get into what's happening at San Quentin, can you briefly give us your backstory of how you ended up there and how much time you served? Sure, I was at San Quentin from May of 2013 all the way till December of 2019. Um, I was in the midst of a 30 year to life sentence that I served under California's three strikes law and was one of the, the fortunate people whose sentence was commuted by Governor Brown um, in 2018. Okay, so you served uh, six years there. Um, so you know enough about it, and that's why you know you're so involved right now. Uh, let's talk about the governor's announcement to transform San Quentin. Uh, do you think what the governor is aiming to do would have had an impact on you or other inmates that you knew there? I mean, I'll start by saying, like, I love the governor's that he thinks about people in prison, that he's thinking about how to make safer communities. I've been a really big fan of his work to close prison yards and, and close prisons, as well as dismantle the infrastructure for California's death row. Like he's doing really good and important work and I, and I wanna lift that up. Um, the conditions at San Quentin, however, are um, archaic and, and the living conditions are really bad. So I don't know that there is a way to um, meaningfully um, center the humanity of people while also holding them in captivity. I love the the shift to resources, and I think the people there uh, are excited about it. And I will be the first to say that those those services, and they could connect to them services um, more meaningfully from the community. Uh, when you say it's archaic, I mean, you're talking about the building or, you know, how the staff interacts with the inmates. Can you just go into more detail of why you think it might be a bit problematic or what challenges the governor would face in his idea to transform the prison? Yeah, I, I think it starts with the buildings. Um, to this day, uh, years after several outbreaks at San Quentin State Prison, the prison remains horribly overcrowded. Um, there are hundreds of people in buildings with 10 to 20 showers, 10 to 20 phones. Um, you stand in long lines for the canteen, for the phone, for basic services. Um, and the space was not designed with rehabilitation in mind. So I think that there are even physical challenges to meaningfully providing um, rehabilitative services for people, for a significant portion of the people who are incarcerated there. In addition, um, the culture that has been ingrained and um, taught among the, the prison guards from their time at, at, at training academy is one that sees the people who they are incarcerating as threats to public safety. It's gonna take a lot more than a policy change or renaming the prison to change the culture among the guards to make it, um, um, and even then it still wouldn't be, get us quite there. Um, and, and I'll just like say transparently, there are hundreds of people at San Quentin who could be released safely today and offered those same services in the community um, and it would make a much healthier transition for all of us. Hmm. Uh, that's a good point that you bring up about the culture. Um, you've written op-eds about the true impact of mass criminalization. What do you think are the changes that need to be made in our prison systems to help people who come out not to commit crimes again? Uh, you know, people like yourself, what were the programs that, that helped you? That's a great question. Um, I learned how to, to deal with trauma. I, I learned um, how to reimagine my future um, while in prison. Um, it wasn't because of the prison, it was in spite of the prison. So um, I was very early on mentored by people with some of the most extreme sentences that, that California offers, people with life without the policy possibility of parole um, who had long ago made transformations in their own life 
and gave me space to imagine um, shedding toxic masculinity and other harmful thinking patterns that, that I developed over the years because I didn't have the proper tools to deal with trauma in my own life. Um, so I think that, that those types of services um, are meaningful, they're important, and they're valuable. I never want to diminish that. I, I just will always uplift that um, people can, the, the services themselves are important, the prison, not so much. Hmm. We've heard from people who are against the governor's move, and that includes Mark Class. His 12-year-old daughter, Polly, was kidnapped and murdered by convicted killer Richard Allen Davis. Davis was on death row at San Quentin State Prison. Class says emphasizing rehabilitation does not work for violent offenders like Davis. Let's listen to some of what he said real quick. I think it's a bunch of garbage. I think it's backwards, and I think it endangers the good people of California. Alan Davis was released from San Quentin in uh, 1993. He was given a job that paid him $16.50 an hour in 1993 as a machinist that was trained in a rehab program, and three months later, my daughter was dead. Hmm. It's painful to hear his story. Uh, James, what's your response to that, to someone who says no, this is not going to work for maybe some people, uh, but not for uh, criminals like the one that you just heard about right there. Yeah, I, I mean, I do appreciate his, his pain and what he's been through, and my heart goes out to him. Um, but it's not a coincidence that the communities that have the best resources have the lowest crime rates. It's not a, commu it's not a coincidence that... Um, the people who receive the most investment and resources in their own lives tend to do better in society. And the idea that um, a person is only what they do is can be understandable, but it's misguided. We all evolve as people. And I don't know a person um, who would want a single moment of their life to be the defining thing that um, freezes them as that person for the rest of their lives. I don't think that that's true of everyone. People evolve, they grow, they change. The question is, are we going to support positive change or just um, think of people as disposable? And then the, the, the last thing that I would say is um, people are coming home. Like, and supporting people um, safe, responsible reentry, which is part of what the governor is trying to do, is a commendable goal and one that I think, um, hopefully, even, even people who have suffered the worst losses would be in favor of. James, before you go, um, you're talking about that positive change. That's exactly what you're doing right now. Uh, give us some, some information as to, you know, what you're working on and where people can go uh, to find that out. Well, you can definitely go to the Ella Baker Center for Human Rights, our website. Um, we are working to pass legislation to help improve the, the conditions of people who are incarcerated and to offer relief to people who have had the most extreme sentences. So one of the bills that, that we're working on is SB 94, which will um, allow judges to reconsider people who have been convicted before 1990 and see if they're suitable and ready for release. Um, we're also working on a bill, SB 474, which will um, end some of the predatory canteen markups uh, that people are experiencing in prisons. Um, like, as we all know, like inflation and prices are going up. Mm -hmm. The wages people are receiving in prison are not, and, and folks are, are drowning underneath it, and their families are as well. Um, so those are some of the things that we're, we're prioritizing and working on. James King, thank you so much. It's been a, a great conversation to have with you, and uh, thanks for all the work that you're doing as well. Thank you as well.